Gray here from Classroom for Beginners and uh, today's video I'm going to show you how to apply your first and second coat of plaster and I'll show you what tool I'm going to use to flatten them off in the middle. So uh, you won't be able to see this but I've marked um, masking tape the side of the door and I've got skirting boards here at the bottom, I've masked them up. I've done the same with the door frames um, and that's just just to keep everything clean. When it's dried you can cut it back and strip it off at the end but this is definitely something I recommend before you even go into applying the plaster. And as you can see I'm starting on the outer edges where the um, wall meets the door frame. I'm just coming left to right. Just trying to get it as smooth as I can really. In this video I'm trying to focus on showing you how I apply the plaster without too much lines or ripples in at the get-go. I try and get it quite flat at the beginning. I've worked with a lot of plasterers who, they don't do it wrong, but in my eyes it can leave the, leave the work a bit messy at the beginning, which means you've got to spend more time flattening, but my aims in this video is to show you the techniques I use to keep it nice and flat at the beginning. So again, I'm working up to my skirting boards here, and now I'm just going to work in full long sweeping motions. So I'll come up, and every time I come back on myself and try and rule out the lines that I've left behind, I just find that this keeps um, keeps the walls nice and flat at the beginning. Um, it takes spend some time working to the edges of the door, but now it should be easy enough. So just one big sweep, and then back down to take out the lines. Um, so what I'm doing is when I'm applying a plaster, as I'm coming up, I'm bringing the trowel closer to the wall. That way, the plaster's been evenly coveraged and it's been released at an even point so you've got the right amount of plaster all the way up again coming back on myself taking the lines out just trying to keep it as flat as possible because this is important a lot of people rely on flattening off at the later stages but if you can get it done early then you save yourself a big part of the job really just focusing around the light switch take care I've pulled it away from the um, from the back box so I've took the screws out and just give myself some space to work around it. Right, just take your time. I think I hit it in a minute actually. I get a bit of plaster on it which is good. But yeah, again, bring come, trowel up and then I trowel back down to take the lines out as I'm, uh, as I'm plastering. That way you just get nice flat results. That way. You're not worrying about anything at later stages because you're on top of it from um, stage one really. In terms of tools I'm using a Marshalltown 14 inch trowel here. Got my, uh, my old trusty. I've had this one for about four years I think now. Still trying to break it in I must admit. Uh, but it's a brilliant trowel to be applying your first coat and second coat with. Um, and there was a bit of a discussion really and something I think we should get into in terms of um, the terms of these flexible trowels and when to use them. I was speaking to a plasterer the other day and he said I mean, those people who apply the plaster with the flexible trowels, they finish with the plaster, they smooth it out, they, um, they flatten off with the flexible trowels. So I think he was talking about this Rafina Superflex, but to me that's it's totally wrong because you need a firm, flat, solid trowel to make your walls flat in the first place. It might look nice before it's painted, but as soon as you paint, and look at your finish of the wall by a sideward glancing light, I think you'll realise that there's going to be a few ripples in there. So I think the use of a solid trowel is, is essential when you're applying, applying and even flattening, flattening your plaster because you need to make sure it's flat and that's the best way to do it. Um, so that's, I'm using a Marshall Town like I said and I won't be using a Superflex at any point in this video. Um, I would only use it towards the end of plastering really, towards the um, you know, the final two trowel overs, that's it. As you can see, I've got a bit of a tricky area here around the um, radiator pipes, but what I've done is I've plastered to the corner bead and I've plastered onto it directly on the first coat. Um, it's just the way I've always been taught, and that's the way I recommend, actually. So plaster it to a thickness you've got at the beginning, and then with your second coat, level it off to the wall. And that way you're not trying to catch up later on down the line. You've got the plaster on, you've got it on the beads, it's good to go. I think that's the best way to do it. For me, that's how all the best plasterers seem to, I've worked with at least, do it that way. So, um, 
that's what I think you recommend you should do. Um, in terms of what towel, I've got a little area here between the two brackets. I'm going to need a midget trowel. I won't show you on this video, but in terms of using a midget trowel when you're applying your plaster, they can be really hard to use at the beginning because they're often not they're not really well designed. I don't think the midget trowels. I think they can often come in quite bad states, they're not really ready for plastering, quite thick, they've not been beveled or sharpened so in terms of applying your plastering, your first and second coat, that's another thing to think about is getting a decent midget trowel um, because you will need it and it's not worth buying a cheap one, they're just not worth it at all. Just buy a well paid one, get a decent one that has good reviews and it's um, a worth, a worth your while. So here's a secret weapon. I've given a go with the Rafina spatula here. This is my first review on it, really. This was really my first time using it. I've never really used it before, this, I must admit. And as you can see, it's taken a lot of time out of the process of uh, plastering here. Literally just scrolling across of it, flattening it off. Easy. I must admit, I was quite impressed using it. I thought it wouldn't, wouldn't be as effective as what it was. Um, but it literally just flattens it off straight away. It's a really, really good tool to be fair. I'm looking at getting um, the Ox Speed Skims as well. I'm going to look at reviewing them very soon. But this is my review on a Rafina one for now. And I must admit it was quite good. Um, this is I've only gone into this in terms of flattening the first and second coat of plaster. But I am intending to do a review later down the line in terms of how it finishes. That's where I think... I'll be a bit dubious, and I am still dubious about to be honest. I don't know how it's going to finish plaster. Uh, people say it's good, um, but we'll have to see. In terms of these stages though, it's ideal. It speeds up the job. If you've got a big area on the go, you know, I've got a few walls on here. I've got the left, right, I've got the return, and I've got another one behind that as well. And it's just, it just made the process a lot easier. It was nice to, uh, nice to use. And to be fair, it was quite quite a nice change it was quite nice on the elbows to have it on two hands it's uh it took a lot of stress out my right arm i must admit i get quite a bad elbow problem sometimes even though i'm only young i'm still getting it it's a bit scary really but anything i can use to relieve a bit of stress you know i don't know how long i'll be plastering for if we can relieve a bit of stress in our joints early on in the game i think it's ideal really and not only that it's just so easy to use both hands Take your time, work to your edges, and then work out. And you can see, just watching the video, it really does flatten the walls. It didn't really take much to get used to either. Felt a tiny bit cack-handed, but you just get used to it, don't you? It's a, it's a brilliant tool. Again, on the beads, filling in any gaps where I've got, any areas where I've got any low spots. And um, use it as if it's a derby. Apply the plaster back onto the wall, and just smooth it back off again. It's a, yeah, it's a good piece of kit. Looking forward to trying some more of them. Like, like I said, the speed skim, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and I want to get a review in fairly soon. So that'll be coming up in the future, guys. Another one. So this is the second coat. Again, I'm still on the Marshall Town 14 inch trowel. It's a thinner coat this time. I'm not applying as much plaster. But again, I'm, I want to keep the walls nice and flat. I don't want to go back on myself. I don't want to leave it in a bad state because if anything, if the plaster does dry on me unexpectedly or I get a stage where I'm falling behind, at least I know that the plaster I've applied is in good nick, it's in good condition and I don't have to worry too much about it. I think it's good practice and if you're learning, if you can get used to this at the beginning, then um, I think that's an invaluable lesson to be learned really and something that will keep you in good stand in the future. I think good, all the best plasters I've met have had the ability to lay on on a smooth, you know, a smooth way. And um, Gaz from Plastering Force, he's really good at um, applying his coats of plaster as well. He he just has it perfect from the get go. You know, that's a sign of a really good plaster. You can tell he's good at his game, and you can tell he's a really good professional, really. So, yeah, if you can just get used to giving that a go, applying on the upstroke coming back on yourself and just trialling out the lines that you've left behind 
or even if you just go on another upstroke just to get rid of the lines, it doesn't matter how you do it, but if you can just get into the practice of keeping it nice and even at the beginning, you'll be in um, a good stand, good standing for it. Again, I'm using a head of a trowel to try and keep my um, skirting boards nice, and you want to make sure, if you are working skirting boards, you've got all the plaster on at the beginning. It's easy to miss some bits, easily done. I mean, especially if you rush in or you're trying to get an area done, it's easy to miss any spots beneath the skirting boards, but you, people will notice it, you know, something that people look at, and it's um, something that needs to be paid attention with. Again, working around the door, I've masking taped the architrave, so you don't have to worry about anything later on down the line, you don't have to worry about cleaning. And again, if you're starting out, this is essential, you don't have to worry about keeping everything clean as you're going, or you don't have to worry about getting your sponge out to keep your woodwork, you know, in good condition. It's all, it's all been prepped for, it's all ready, and you don't have to worry about it. As you can see on the bead here, I'm just filling it out now. The first coat got the majority of it, but the second coat is just going to give it that extra millimetre thickness, bringing it level to the wall that I'm working on. I'm just giving it a nice flat finish there, nice flat wall in the end. If you don't put enough on, you'll have, a, you'll have an indentation where the plaster dips between the wall and the bead. So the second coat just gives it the extra thickness you need to fill out the bead properly and give you the right... Um, the right fitness for the wall. They are tricky to work with beads sometimes, I must admit, in the beginning they are quite quite fiddly to get right, but the more practice you get working with corner beads, the better. Obviously we can't <laughs> you can't go around it really, you can't leave corners out in the room, you've got to do them, so this is the best advice, just get as much as you can on with your first coat and with your second coat, get it as flat and as um, level as you can. It just takes practice, you need to go through the notions and just literally just have a good go at them and then get better as time goes on really and you'll find you'll start getting the right movement for it and you'll start realizing the thickness you need to apply for plaster you just start getting a knack for it but unfortunately it takes a lot of trial and error <laughs> thing we're learning and it? it's it's easy to tell you what to do but unless you've got the trial in your hand and the plaster on your hawk it's it's a different story really but just give it a good go. Try your hardest, take your time and work on a small area. If you've never done it before, if you've never worked on corner bees, just focus on one and uh, you'll come out fine. Again, second coat, up and then I come back down on myself, flatten it out. It's a good technique to learn really. Up and I come back down again. It's, the, um, it's a good way to get a nice flat finish on your walls coming towards the end of the video and unfortunately I ran out of um, battery on my camera so I've not been able to put the Rafina spatula to the full test really on this video but like I said I'm planning to do another another review, a fuller review just on a Rafina spatula and try and get a finish on the go try and see if I can film a nice um, see what its finish is like and how it compares to a normal plaster plastering trowel that's what it looks like after a flattened off. This is only after the second coat. This is literally just the first flatten off with the uh, spatula. It's left a nice flat wall. Good piece of kit. Look forward to using it again. Um, but that's it for me. That's the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And if you do like it, please subscribe. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. Like I said, get involved on our website, Plastering for Beginners. And... The more we see you, the happier, really. Thanks a lot. Stay in touch. Speak soon. Bye.